Hello everyone and uh, today we are going to learn about a very interesting topic that is stomatic hybridization. In our previous video we learned about the protoplast culture and how the protoplast culture is done and what are the different methods of protoplast culture. Then we learned about the how the cell wall formation takes place or the whole plant formation takes place and then the regeneration of plants in the protoplast culture so you can just go through it and then you can relate the concepts in a better way and you can have a better understanding regarding the protoplast culture and today we are going to interest uh, learn about the interesting topic that is stomatic hybridization personally it is my favorite one so let's look into the details about it now uh, you must have come across the concept of stomatic hybridization so stomatic hybridization it is the conventional method to improve the characteristics of cultivated plants for years that has been sexual hybridization so the limitation of the sexual hybridization is that it can be uh, perf uh, performed within a plant species or very closely related species now what it does is it restricts the improvements that can be done in plants. So the species barrier for plant improvement encountered in sexual hybridization can overcome by stomatic cell fusion that can perform uh, that can form a viable fibrates. So stomatic hybridization what it is exactly it involves it involves the intro fusion of the isolated protoplast to form a hybrid cell and its subsequent development to form a hybrid plant. So this is exactly what it is stomatic hybridization that the in vitro fusion of the isolated protoplast to form a hybrid cell and its subsequent development to form a hybrid plant that is stomatic hybridization. So plant protoplasts are of immense utility in some in stomatic plant cell genetic manipulations and the improvement of crops takes place. So the protoplasts provide a opportunity to create the cells with the new genetic constitution and protoplast fusion is a wonderful approach to overcome the sexual incompatibility between the different species of plants. So there are applications of stomatic hybridizations and the stomatic hybridization involves few aspects. So the aspects of the stomatic hybridization, one is the fusion of protoplast, second is the selection of hybrid cells and third one is the identification of the hybrid plants. So we learn in more detail about the fusion of protoplast then the selection of hybrid cells and the identification of the hybrid plants. So coming to the fusion of protoplast. Now fusion of protoplast, the isolated protoplast are devoid of cell walls and their in vitro fusion becomes relatively easy as there are no barriers of incompatibility at interspecific or intergeneric or even at the interkingdom level for the protoplast fusion. So protoplast fusion, what it is, it involves the mixing of protoplast of two different genomes that can be achieved by these three methods. The three methods are the spontaneous fusion, second one is the mechanical fusion and third one is the induced fusion. Now coming to the spontaneous fusion, the cell fusion, it is the natural process as it is observed in case of egg fertilization. Now you must be knowing that how the egg fertilization takes place and it is the natural process. So during this course of enzymatic degradation of cell walls, some of the adjoining protoplasts may fuse to form the homocaryocytes, so homeokaryons. So these fused cells, it sometimes contain high number of nuclei. It may range from 2 to 40. So this is because of the expansion and the subsequent coalescence of the plasmodermal connections between the cells. And the frequency of homocaryon formation, it was found to be high in protoplast, which was isolated from the dividing culture of cells. 
so spontaneous fuel spread of blast cannot regenerate into the whole plants except undergoing a few cell divisions so that is the spontaneous fusion now coming to the second fusion that is the mechanical fusion so the protoplast can be pushed together mechanically to fuse so protoplast of lilium and trillium and enzyme solutions can be fused by gentle trapping in a depression slide so in a depression slide the uh, lilium and trillium and enzyme solutions can be fused and the mechanical fusion that may cause damage or they damage the uh, protoplast by causing injuries so injuries are caused in the mechanical fusion now coming to the third fusion that is very interesting that is the induced fusion so uh, freshly isolated protoplast they can be fused by the method of induction so it is called as the induced fusion there are several fusion inducing agents that are used for this purpose and they are called as fusion fusogens so fusogens they are uh, used for this purpose and they are the fusion inducing agents so they are called as fusogens so examples such as the nano3 or the high ph calcium polyethylene glycol polyvinyl alcohol or the lysozyme dextran dextran sulfate fatty acids and esters and electrofusion these are some of the fusogens that are used and their use is in induced fusion now uh, the fusogens that are used they they are treatment with the sodium nitrate now the what happens is the isolated protoplast are exposed to a mixture of 5.5 percent of nano3 that is sodium nitrate in 10 percent of the sucrose solution and further the incubation is carried out to for five minutes at 35 degrees celsius that is followed by centrifugation so what happens first is the mixture of 5.5% of NaNO3 in 10% of sucrose solution. Then further the incubation is carried out for 5 minutes at 35 degrees Celsius. And then the centrifugation is carried out. Now the protoplast pellet is kept in a water bath for after that at 30 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. During which the period protoplast fusion occurs. And the sodium nitrate treatments result in a roof frequency of the heterocarion formation particularly when the mesophyll protoplast are fused so this is how the treatment with sodium nitrate is done now the other treatment that is carried out is the high ph and high calcium ion treatment so in this method this was the first method that was carried out for the fusion of tobacco protoplast and now it is used for the other plants also and the method consists of the incubating uh, protoplast in a solution of 0.4 uh, mannitol containing 0 0.05 uh, molar calcium uh, uh, calcium chloride at pH 10.5 and the glycine NOH buffer is used and the temperature that is used is 37 degrees celsius for 30 to 40 minutes so the protoplast form aggregates and the fusion usually occurs within 10 minutes now by this method the 20 to 50 percent of the protoplast is involved in the fusion so this is how the fusion of protoplast for, uh, is done uh, with the treatment of the high ph and high calcium ion treatment the third one is used is the polyethylene glycol treatment. Now, this is the method of choice because of the high success rate. And the fusion of protoplast from many plant species is carried out. Now, in this method, the isolated protoplast in culture medium, that is 1 ml, are mixed with the equal volume, that is 1 ml of 28 to 56% of polyethylene glycol. So, in a tube what happens is the isolated protoplast is taken and then the uh, equal volume of uh, PEG peg that is polyethylene glycol is mixed with the equal volume of isolated protoplast and what happens is the peg involved enhances the fusion of protoplast in several species now this tube is shaken and then it is allowed to settle 
the settled protoplasts are washed several times with the culture medium and uh, there are certain advantages for the PEG treatment and it is widely used for the protoplast fusion. The reason because it results in a ready, uh, reproducible high frequency of heterocaryon formation and the low toxicity to cells and also the reduced formation of binucleate heterocaryons takes place. So the uh, other advantage is that the PEG induced fusion is non-specific and it can be used for the wide range of plants. So it has got certain advantages. So the PEG treatment is used widely. Then the other method that is used is electrofusion. Now in this method, the electric field is used for the protoplast fusion. When the protoplasts are placed in a culture vessel, they are fitted with micro electrodes and the electric shock is applied. The protoplasts are induced to fuse in this method. And the electrofusion technique it is quite simple. It is also quick and efficient. And it is uh, so widely uh, used by the workers. The cells formed due to electrofusion do not show the cytotoxic responses as in the case with the use of fusogens including the peg. So the major limitation of the electrofusion method is that the requirement of specialized and the costly equipment. That is the reason because the, the electrofusion method is not used commonly. So these are the methods that are used for the treatment of the protoplast fusion. Uh, we'll learn more in detail about the mechanical or mechanism of the fusion and everything in next video in more detailed manner. So if you like the video, don't forget to click on thumbs up button below and also don't forget to subs uh, subscribe for more video updates. So stay tuned for more lessons to come and thank you for watching.